In this uh, session, I really want to take a quick look at MedV 2.0, uh, recently released. And remember, MedV is that technology that really solves app to operating system compatibility challenges. And it does this by essentially running a Windows XP virtual machine locally on your Windows 7 desktop, and then running those legacy applications or IE6 in that VM in a totally transparent way to the user. So just walking through this, I mean, the first thing we need is an XP VM. So we just installed Windows Virtual PC. Um, I've installed XP, SP2 on this. I'm going to install the integration components for Windows Virtual PC, which is a requirement. And I'm going to skip a lot of the, I don't want to sit and watch all this happening, but we install this. And once I've done that, obviously I need to install actually SP3, Windows XP, that's another requirement for this, so I'm going to run and install SP3. Once that actually went through the install, the next thing we actually do, so again, I'm going to skip through a lot of this. So we reboot the box. I'm going to apply the latest patches. Now, one of the things we, we have to install is we need a .NET Framework 3.5 uh, SP1. So this is just available there's some hot fixes related to uh, remote applications, which we actually leverage to actually display this. Because the whole point is, I don't want the user's desktop to see a second window containing XP, a separate start menu as confusing. I want it to be totally integrated with their main experience. Now, one thing we want to make sure we don't install is if we're using MedV for IE6, is to not install IE8. So when you go through the updates, you want to actually look out as I'm doing here and unselect Internet Explorer 8. Obviously, I want this running IE6. This is going to be my solution, not just for my legacy apps that don't run on Windows 7, but also for those apps, uh, sorry, for the experience why I need IE6. So installing all those updates, that's going to go through uh, an update. And again, this is all step by step uh, in the Medvi documentation. And then installing those legacy apps that, are, that will not run on Windows 7, but I need available. I'm just using Office XP as an example here. Once we've installed our apps, we just run sysprep. And again, there's an example sysprep file in the documentation for MedV. So this is all just preparing an XP VM that's actually going to get pushed out to all of my clients. So I've installed my apps, I've patched it, it's ready to go. So I'm going to shut the thing down after it's been sysprepped. The next thing is actually creating a MedV workspace. And it's a very simple uh, management. We can separate from a workspace define web pages that need to use the IE6. That's one of the cool features. Um, we can just specify certain websites should always use IE6. So I select the name of my workspace. I select a place to store it. So I'm actually going to store it along with my VM. Next thing I'm actually going to do is select the VM that's going to be part of this MedV workspace. So again, that was that XP VM, that SP3, Integration services, .NET Framework 3.5, SP1, and that I've sysprepped. So I'm going to select that. Now I can select what happens for the first time. So the users have been notified there's initial MedV setup because this is customizable to what I put in that sysprep. Maybe I want it to join my domain. Uh, maybe there's some customizations running some programs. Do I want a unique MedV workspace for each user or all users can share? And then who becomes an administrator of that workspace? So I'm just going to say, okay, let all of them. And this has helped all along the way. You can specify first time setup messages. And then what do you want the MedV virtual machine to be called? And you've got all these different options here. So you can let Sysprep manage it, or you can let the MedV just pick any one of these combinations that, that you see right here. So make your selection what you want to do. So I'm just selecting really just have MedV and then some random fill. Any settings you want copied from the host computer, i.e. the machine that this MedV workspace is running on, how networking works, when to start the MedV, i.e when it's first used or when the user logs on or let the user select that. Storing credentials makes it easier for the user to don't have to enter credentials every time they use it. Obviously that is stored. This is the call part. 
So if you are requiring IE6, rather than the user having to make a choice to say, well, you need to use IE6 to access this website, you can just pre-configure certain websites to require IE6 by just typing them in here, or you can import a list. And you can modify these later on by in that main workspace packager, just adding additional sites that get imported into the workstations. Gives you a summary. Then I'm actually just gonna go and say create. This takes a little while, it's compressing down that XPVM. And I'm sort of fast forwarding time a little bit here. It wouldn't actually run this fast, as you can see from the, the time. <laughs> So it's going through and it's customizing that image. It actually opens up the VHD, it installs some MedV components into it, taking um, all my configurations and getting it ready, compressing down that MedV XP VM into a MedV format. So again, it's saving network. And the cool thing about MedV2 is there's not a server infrastructure. I deploy this using my existing enterprise software distribution mechanisms. It's basically deployed like a program. So now it's actually just going through finalizing, creating that workspace package. And now we're done. We have that package ready to actually go and deploy to all our workstations. And like I say, all we've done in advance is installed Windows Virtual PC and the MedV agent. So now this is actually on a client. This is on my client machine and I'm just running setup.exe. I'm doing it manually but just as easily, this would be done by pushing with SCCN, group policy, or so, as I say, any enterprise deployment. So I'm going to move the screen around a little bit here because I'm deploying on a, a much bigger resolution. So it's basically expanding out that compressed MedV virtual hard disk. It's installing it just as a normal Windows virtual PC, so we'll actually be able to go and see that in the Windows virtual PC, and that is done. You click Finish, and it's now going to go and do that um, sort of initial setup for the MedV. Now I've now got a little MedV system tray icon that's showing me, hey, it's going to set up the workspace. I'm going to say starting now instead of waiting for five minutes. So it's going to go through, configure that. It's wanting to me for my credentials. It's going to use to log on to the workspace. And I'm saying remember. So it's not going to prompt me each time I access an application within that MedV workspace. So if I actually go to program data, this is where it's installing that workspace. You can see the VHD has been expanded. I'm going to select just a normal start for my MedV environment. So the machine boots faster because I mean, I always need these applications. So it's now actually going to go through and I can see now that virtual PC is actually there. The Windows XP, but now it's using two gigs of RAM on mine. So I have a 12 gig box. It will adjust the amount of RAM it uses based on what's available in the machine. So it's saying, hey, you've got a ton of memory, I'm going to use up two. If I only have four gig, it might use one, which is what it does on my sleep device. So now it's getting that all configured, and now it's there. Now look, all those applications that I installed in the XP are just on my normal start menu. I don't really see anything different. The icons look a bit old, but they're now just integrated with my Windows 7 desktop. Now, what I did is I just installed Office normally so its icons were put on the main start menu. If I had put these into a folder, they would just appear as a folder on my start menu. And you can move them around once you've installed it. So I could, I actually now move these into like an Office software. I launch one of them. And there. Again, I'm just moving it around. If I go and look at about this, we're actually going to see, if I look at my system info, so it's running the word XP and it's running on Windows XP. Again, it's totally integrated with my Windows 7 desktop, but it's actually running on that XP VM invisibly to you. Now the only hint I do see is the fact that obviously it's not running Aero Glass, which the rest of my environment is, because obviously it's running on an XP virtual machine. If I launch normal word, see I'm running them both on the same desktop, then I can run them side by side and I could run, that's one of the key powers here is I can run a version that's not compatible with Windows 7 on my Windows 7 environment because it's running in that buried XPVM. Let's try the web page redirection. So I need this one on IE6. Remember I configured this address, I launch it, and bang, 
it actually launched IE6 in the XPVM, sent it the URL, and then showed it on my Windows 7 desktop. Behind the scenes, it did launch my IE9, and it just said, hey, this web page has been opened in an earlier version of Internet Explorer, which is that IE6. It's just a little site I created. If I go back to that to just show it again, if I do a refresh, in a, so I can enter it in IE, again, Internet Explorer redirects it and reopens that IE6. I hope that was useful and really just showed you, A, how easy it is to now actually use MedV, you just deploy it as an application, and how integrated it is with our Windows 7 environment. Those icons are in my start menu. In the Explorer, I just type URLs in from the start run, or IE9 or 8, and it will automatically just redirect them to IE6 in the XPVM. I hope that was useful, and uh, thank you for your time.